Hey everybody, AJ here. I am Texas Green Tea on Twitter, and this is um, video five in our series of how to build a dogfight flight sim game in Unity 3D. Um, so we're almost done with this thing. We've got two planes and a, a player and an opponent, and both of them are able to uh, fire the gun, shoot each other, crash into each other, crash into the ground. All of that is in place now. The last thing we need to do to wrap this up, and we're going to do this in this video and in one more video after this, we're going to give the red plane a bit uh, bigger of a brain. We're going to teach him how to sense when the opponent is near. Well, this is our player. He's the opponent. We're going to teach the opponent how to sense when the player is near. Uh, and when we get close enough to him, he's going to go into attack mode. Uh, and he's going to start chasing us, and we're going to give him uh, the ability to shoot us as well. So that's all happening in this video and the next one. Um, here we go. So we, just like before, we are going to need to do this with some collider sensors. Um, so we, uh, when we were creating explosions in the last video, we attached this explosion sensor to the uh, uh, the player plane and the opponent plane. We're going to need more colliders in order to get the uh, AI up and running. Um, so the first thing we need to do is attach a collider to this guy that that allows him to sense when this guy is near. And we're going to call that the um, the chase sensor because that's going to cue him to start chasing us. So I'm going to move our uh, player controller out of the way a little bit so we have some breathing room for this. The chase sensor should be pretty big because you have to, when you're in flight, you're going to have to get pretty close to this guy in order to set off his chase sensor unless you make it really big. You want to find a sweet spot by playing around with this, but generally I've found 100 meters, 200 meters is a pretty good chase sensor size. Um, so let's go into AI colliders and we're going to add a new component. Uh, right click, create empty, I'm going to call this chase sensor. Now this is going to be very important. We're going to deal with this in a little bit, but uh, um, just know right off the bat we're going to need to tag this sensor appropriately for what it is, um, because we'll we'll see what happens if we don't do this um, uh, when we start uh, playing around with this chase sensor. Chase sensor. But for right now, just know that you need to tag the chase sensor as a chase sensor. Um, and if you don't do if you don't have the chase sensor listed here in your tag list, just click Add Tag and type it in. Remember to make sure it's uh, camel case. You have a capital C, capital S, because this is case sensitive stuff. Okay, so um, now that we have the chase sensor object, we've got the chase sensor tag, we need a chase sensor collider. And we're going to use a sphere collider this time because we want it to be symmetrical from all directions. Um, and it's when we first put it in, it's probably going to be pretty small. So if you size it up, you can see it there, and you probably want to scale it to something like 100 to start. Okay, zoom out. You can see how big that green sphere is. If we fly into that green sphere with the player plane, we want to set it up such that that's what cues the red plane to go into attack mode. Um, let's actually make this bigger. Let's go to 200. There we go, and so it's very close. You might go into attack, uh, attack mode almost immediately, but that's what we want to test it with. Um, and so another thing we want to remember when we're dealing with colliders as sensors as opposed to walls, we don't want to be able to crash into this object as a wall, so we've got to make sure we set it as a trigger, not a regular collider, right? We want to turn that trigger sensor on. Okay, so now we need to deal with the chase sensor functionality, um, and uh, to do that I've written a custom script called chase. So if you didn't have one of those, you just type in chase as a new script. It's telling me that script already exists because I've created it previously. So I'm going to type in chase to find it, and there we go. This one doesn't have any parameters that it needs in order to do its thing. Um, it's a very simple script. Um, and, and so we're going to jump in and have a look at what's going on in this script. Here we go. We have a waypoint progress tracker. This is the track that the opponent is going to be chasing. We also have a start function where we set the, the waypoint uh, progress tracker. Um, and then if the trigger is queued, in other words, if we go through the sphere, then we're going to do whatever it says here. In this case, we're going to look for a player collider. <coughs> Excuse me. Basically, we're just going to ask, is the collider that entered the sphere 
uh, one that belongs to the player. And if it is, then we want to chase that player. And we're going to do that by changing the uh, circuit that the opponent is facing. So if I, right off the bat, if I just hit play and pause, I want to observe a couple of things here. So pause. Notice that the the opponent has a green line shooting straight out forward right now which is potentially a problem because that green line is telling us where his waypoint tracker is guiding him. It's guiding him straight which means he has no idea where he's supposed to go. We really want him to be attached to this yellow course to start because if he's not chasing anybody then we need to give him some kind of default behavior. Um, and the way we do that is by going into, let me turn this off first, we go into Jetcraft AI and you see on his top level object he has a waypoint progress tracker and that tracker has a, a circuit uh, property and that circuit property is actually set to our old waypoints from the original scene. You remember we in the first video we resized these but before we did that we made a, a duplicate copy so that we wouldn't ruin the original. Um, this guy is still looking, sorry the AI is still looking for those original waypoints and that's why he's lost right now. His green line is you know, shooting off into the middle of nowhere because he doesn't know where his waypoints are. So all we've got to do is tell him hey your waypoints are right here. So I'm gonna grab these, drag them onto the circuit that he's looking for and now that should be updated. Now he's looking for the line, the yellow line that's actually existing in our scene. So if I hit play again you should see the green line updated. And there it is. So you see the green line that's shooting out of him is facing straight up toward that yellow line. Now that's telling us that as soon as he takes off he's gonna head straight for that. Um, and you'll see how that that green line follows the yellow line as he progresses. Let's uh, just fly a little bit and see if we can observe that happening. So I'm going to try and not crash my plane to send it off into the middle of nowhere. Really, I just want to observe this guy. Let's see how he's following along that yellow line. Not too closely, but generically he's close enough. Looks like he was heading pretty close to the floor. You, you remember in the first video I said they fly pretty close to the floor using these waypoints, so I think maybe we should even give him some extra height on this waypoint circuit. Let's drag that up a little bit more, give him some breathing room for altitude. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the next thing we need to do is teach him when we get through his chase sensor, when it's time for him to start chasing us, how do we get that green line to point instead of at this yellow line, how do we get it to point at us instead? Well, all he's using to determine what to point at is this waypoint circuit. The yellow line is right here, and so if we replace that with uh, an object that, that is attached to our player, then he, he's going to point at our player instead. Um, so, so all we need to do is uh, set up a, another set of waypoints. And we don't need a lot of waypoints because any waypoints that exist on, in this new copy are supposed to all be attached to the player. So really we need the fewest waypoints possible. If you're creating a waypoint circuit, you, want, you can't do it without at least two waypoints. You have to have the first two. If you delete all except one, the waypoint uh, circuit will crash. Um, so you don't want that to happen. You have to save at least two of them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a copy of these waypoints, duplicate, and we're going to call this the uh, chase circuit. Enter. And then I'm going to pop this open, and I'm going to delete all except the first two waypoints, because that's all we need. Now I'm going to click the chase circuit, and notice how all of the ones that I deleted are still um, referenced here, but they're referenced as empty objects because the waypoint circuit can't find them anymore. What we want to do is clear the cache on this, get rid of all of these references, and replace them with new references. And the way we do that is just hit minus, minus, minus over and over again until the whole thing is clear, and then reassign. And so now you can see this circuit is mapped to only the children of this object that still exist. Okay, so that's set up. Um, next, we want to drag this onto the player so that the waypoint circuit that the, the AI is going to chase uh, when we command it to is now an attachment of the player. Let's 
close everything down here so we can see that. So now we have our aircraft player and he has a chase circuit attached. The problem with that is it's not actually attached to his actual plane object. It's attached to an offset. Like with lots of things in Unity, it's because of that old transform. It remembered its old transform so that it's way offset from where it should be. So if I zero this out and then I, anytime I'm zooming in on these guys, it's because I'm hitting the F key. I hit F to find where it is now. Um, you see it's now attached to the plane, at least close to it. Let's move it up so that it's really attached. There we go. Um, the same thing you're going to have to do for the children, because if you notice, the children also remember their old transforms. These are way up here still, which is a problem. Um, so we're going to have to take both of these and zero out their transforms as well. And that way, if you look back at where these are now positioned, boom, they're all connected to the plane. Um, and that means that if we use this chase circuit as the circuit that this guy is looking for, if we were to drop this right there, then the green line will then now be pointing at the player plane. Let's actually uh, test that to confirm that that's going to work. Drag the chase circuit onto the circuit uh, property that the, the AI is looking for, and look at that. Pause, notice, the green line that's shooting out of the opponent plane is now pointing at the player. So the, the opponent is now in chase mode, he's in attack mode, he's going to come after us. We need to be careful with this because if the opponent tries to turn around and come after us while he's on the runway, he's probably going to explode. So we don't really want to set off this sensor before he gets off the ground. So we're going to turn this off. We're definitely going to set this back to his original waypoint set so that he's looking up into the sky during takeoff. We have to wait at least that long before we set off his chase sensor. Um, but the only thing we have left to do to get him to chase us is to, to use this sphere collider to switch uh, his waypoint set from this one to this one. Um, and that will get him aiming, f instead of aiming at the circuit up here, it'll get him aiming at our player plane. Okay, let's make that happen. That's what the uh, code is for that we attached to his um, his chase sensor. So let's look at his chase sensor. We put the chase script on him. I'm going to pop that open again. Have a look at what we're doing here. If player plane tag is player collider, in other words, if the collider that just penetrated this sphere is tagged as a player collider, then this line of code is actually telling, uh, telling the, uh, the opponent to update his circuit from whatever it is to this. And so it's finding this by referencing tag chase circuit. So there's a couple of tags we need to have in place in order for this to work. First, this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the player plane tag. Um, this is referencing a collider. See this, this collider player plane. This is looking for a collider that has a tag called player collider. And we haven't said anything like that yet, so we need to go do it. Otherwise, the uh, chase sensor is not going to be able to recognize when it gets penetrated. So let's look at the aircraft jet, pop open his colliders. Notice all of his colliders don't have any tags whatsoever. So we, we need to pick at least one of these. Let's zoom in here so we can see. We need to pick at least one of these to act as the uh, collider that sets off the chase sensor. Um, let's pick the nose capsule because that's the furthest to the front. I, I like that, that one because it's definitely going to set it off. Um, so the tag here is currently untagged. All you got to do is switch it to player collider. There it is. Now if you don't have this one, just like we've done with others, click add tag and type it in. And remember to to observe exactly how it's typed in here because whatever whatever's written here will be case sensitive to whatever's written here. So you want to make sure those match. Um, so now that this nose capsule is set as a player collider, this will set off the chase sensor, the sphere that we were looking at before. This this guy. As soon as we go through this sphere, that nose will set off the script. Uh, it'll set off on trigger enter and it, it'll recognize, hey, that's player collider, therefore let's execute this script. Now when we do try and execute this script, we gotta make sure this tag's in place too because otherwise it won't know which chase circuit we're talking about. We called it chase circuit. 
no problem. The name is fine, but it's not looking for the name. It's looking for the tag, right? It says find with tag chase circuit. So if there's no if there's no object in your scene that has a chase circuit tag, it's going to find nothing. Um, so let's make sure there's a chase circuit tag on the chase circuit. And there we go. Okay. Again, if you don't have this in your list, add it right there. Okay. Um, so now that all these tags are in place, let's see if we're going to set off the chase sensor dynamically. Let's move this guy a little bit further back so that we can see it. Whoops, not that guy. We need the top level plane object. Slide him back and let's select the chase sensor so we can see this happening. So the chase sensor is already pretty close. We're probably going to set it off as soon as we hit play. But let's start it up and see if we can uh, trigger it. Pause it so that we can step through nice and slow. Zoom in, watch him pass through the collider. And there it is. You see, as soon as the nose went through the collider, the green line was pointing up at the sky. Now it's pointing at the player plane. Now he's in chase mode. Um, and so, so before we get up into the air, you're probably going to find that he crashes before he gets off the ground. Because what he's going to try and do is chase us, even though he's on the ground. He's going to turn his wings straight into the floor and explode. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> He survived this time, but generally I have seen him crash as he's trying to take off if we set off his chase sensor too soon. Um, so, so what you want to be careful of is if you make his chase sensor nice and large, remember not to set it off too soon. Make, your, make sure your player plane is far enough away so that he doesn't get set off until after he's in the air. Okay, so to do that right now, I'm just going to take his chase sensor and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit because 200 was fine for testing. It's a little large for uh, in-game play. And this is one of the things you can use to set the difficulty of the game because if he's easier able to sense when there's an opponent, uh, uh, when there's somebody to shoot at nearby, then he's going to come after you more often. So, th so this is one of the things you can resize in order to make your game easier or harder. Um, let's play it one more time, see if we can set his collider off again. Notice the green line is facing straight up into the sky. Fly through his collider, and now he's after us. Let's take off. Zoom in on him, see if he's still chasing us. shoot at us. Once he's on the hunt, if he's got his sights on us, he should be pulling the trigger. Um, and so we're going to teach him how to do that as the last video in this series. That's coming up, uh, and that's going to be the last thing we need in order to have a fully fledged dogfight flight sim game. So stick around. We're almost done with this thing, uh, and, uh, and we've got just a little bit left. We, uh, I think we're going on just about an hour of video footage here, um, but we're about to wrap it up, so st stay tuned. <laughs>